bam. So here we are, we're gonna talk about our caulking and tape method of getting perfectly straight lines, how we go about doing it, and try to answer some of the mysteries and some of the questions about this method that we keep getting. So we got a reference that we can just tell people to go to here online. And boy, do we get questions. A whole lot. Lots of questions. questions. Um, one is the tape we use. We use frog tape and we use 3M 2020 tape. When do we use these two tapes, John? So typically what we'll tell our guys is default to the 2020 tape, but we'll use frog tape anytime where the, the trim is freshly painted. So like we'll have sprayed the trim and if we're trying to get some of those lines done that day, we'll use frog tape because the adhesive's a little bit gentler or anytime we're working on something that's metal or like a, uh, like a stained wood because it just gives us that extra protection of sealing up that tape and making sure we've got nice crystal clear lines. And one of the reasons between the two tapes too is this is our production tape. It's only about a buck 20 a roll. This some, I think we pay maybe like four or $5 a roll for this. Yeah. And um, this has like this magic pixie dust on it that is on the, the outside edges of the tape. Super that, cool. That swells and it keeps um, paint or it keeps the caulking from bleeding underneath. So this is an amazing tape. It's really good for smooth surfaces like glass mm -hmm. and stuff. Then we use two different types of caulking and one of the caulkings is a clear caulking and one is a white caulking. And clear caulking, the clear, a lot of people are, we are getting people from other parts of the world that say that they um, didn't even know clear caulking exists or they can't even get it. You don't have to use clear caulking, um, but there are some situations when it is highly recommended and that's on like going over stained wood. Yeah. Um, something like, uh, what, uh, what would you think? Uh, anytime, so we'll use clear anytime when the tram or the wall color is not white or similar to a white. So if you've got stained wood or if you've got a trim, like some people have a dark trim color, something like that. We don't want that little white line of caulking to show up. And the clear shouldn't be confused with silicone, which is not paintable. So you want to look for a paintable, clear, latex caulking. And, so, and a lot of people get confused when we're using clear caulking because it comes out white. But dry and, is clear. And so... Again, it, magic. And it, it's, it's amazing all these magic things that these um, painting companies come up with. But it, it's you'll see it. We'll be wiping it and it's going to be uh, white, but it does in a few hours it'll dry clear. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why we don't use clear all the time, because you may ask why don't we always use clear, the clear versus white, the white caulking is a lot thicker and there's a reason why we like a thicker caulking, John. What is that? It builds, it lasts a, a little bit longer to me just, it, it, and then it doesn't shrink as much. Like to me, the clear caulking, because it, it's, there's less body in it. It's mostly acrylic. It, it dries that clear, but it shrinks quite a bit. And that's where you might run into some problems with any gaps. So if you've got a gap between your tram and your wall, that that clear doesn't really hold that gap as well as a white would. Yep. So eventually when the caulking and the paint dries, mm -hmm. it's going to, um, the, the clear is going to shrink a lot more and you may have to go back over it and redo it. So that's why we wouldn't use clear a hundred percent of the time is be, is to me the shrink ability of it. It shrinks a lot. So um, we're going to walk you through some of the processes and how we go about doing it. And we're going to show you, we do get a lot of questions. People will be asking us, you know, when do we do that method? And we use it. We got right here situations. We got a door jam and we got baseboards in these walls, but we've already done the walls. And some people are going to have a question. Well, why aren't we doing that first? Why are we doing it last? And there's a lot of different, um, I guess scenarios, uh, what we would call it, why we do what we do. And when we walk into uh, each house, the majority of the time, you know, we're going to do it one way, but there are going to be certain situations where we would change our method and this would be one and we have a light color and explain John with the light color and why we're not concerned about maybe like haloing and stuff like that. Yeah. So typically uh, two things we've got going for us. One, we're using a product that's self leveling. And so it, it has a bit longer of an open time. It levels out. So I'm a little less worried about issues like differences in stippling uh, Two, it's a light color. So anytime we've got a light color or I've got a color that uses a lot of natural oxides uh, as the pigment, you don't have to worry about the way those, those pigments, 
it's lay out and flashing, and that's typically what's happening with haloing. You're using um, blacks, blues, greens, reds, things that aren't really natural uh, pigments, and, and those things, that's where you'll end up seeing those issues. So that's when we're really careful about our process to make sure we do our cut-ins first and then roll the fields last. This color, it's, it's very, very natural. It, it, it's light. We don't have those issues, and so we have the freedom, and it's one of those things. You just you get creative, you experiment a little bit, and you try new things. We know with this color, we've got the freedom. We can work ahead rolling, which is great because we had sprayed the trim. We needed to buy some time while that was drying. Well, we can just start rolling walls and ceilings and then come back in after that trim set up and start trimming those pieces out. Yep, so th this paint that we use in the product is, and the color is very forgiving. Very so we can roll these walls. We rolled these walls yesterday. We can come back and do these cut-ins and you're not gonna see any haloing. You don't have to worry about keeping a wet edge. If you're using dark colors, our process is gonna completely change and we're probably, as a team, gonna be working from room to room. But it, you just gotta take each situation and evaluate the situation and determine you know, what you're gonna do when. But when it comes to the caulking, and how we go about caulking and um, getting straight lines with the tape and caulking, that typically is a straightforward process that we do the same every time. Yep. So I do see some gloves right here, John. Uh, you like wearing these types of gloves I right do. here when you caulk. Why do you wear those gloves? Well, I like having soft hands for one, but uh, I, really it comes down to, I, I, I don't want to spend a bunch of time at the end of the day cleaning a bunch of stuff off of my hands it's really dry here in the winter especially, so then you've got paint, you've got caulking on your hands which is gonna dry them out, then they're gonna be dry because it's winter anyway. And I just, I like having clean hands and it allows me to, if I get stuff on my hands but then I need to go handle a door that we just painted, I don't wanna get that stuff on the door, I can take them off, I can move them. And you know, we buy ours from Costco, they're super, super cheap if you pick them up at somewhere like Costco. And it's just a nice way to keep everything clean and keep that professional look. It's a very cheap expense, even if you go through like 10 of them a day. These things are our pennies. I like using like gloves like these on the exterior of a house. I caulk with these on an exterior, but when I get to an interior, when your caulking detail has to look a lot cleaner and a lot more precise, these gloves aren't gonna work. And I'll either use bare hands or I'll use gloves. But bare, if you're using your bare hands, you gotta uh, read the ingredients on caulking. And if you're concerned about absorbing those chemicals through your skin, you probably should use some gloves. And they're gonna keep your hands cleaner, just like John said. Uh, so let's see, anything else we can talk about the caulking method? I think we might as well just go and show you what it looks like right here. We're working, this is a huge gigantic house, I don't know, five, 6,000 square feet. We've been working on it, now this is the fifth day. We're gonna be done, but we're using uh, the three and 20 tape, um, it, 20, 20 tape in this hallway, and then we've been using some frog tape. So we're gonna show you that, so let's go. So here's the first situation. I've got a door jam right here and some baseboards. And I'm gonna just caulk this right here. And I'm just gonna put a little small bead because the bead of caulking itself, you're really just wiping it all off. So you're not trying to put a whole lot of caulking on. The more caulking you put on, the more you're gonna have to wipe off. So I'm just gonna put a little tiny bead on this caulking or on this tape right here. And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because the caulking dries pretty fast. So I'm going to do, you know, short runs, short sections. I got a little bead of caulking there. Now I'm just going to begin wiping it off. And one of the nice things about us putting this nine inch paper down, I can just wipe the excess caulking on the paper right here. So I'm just going to keep, you know, wiping it clean here. So I don't want a, a whole lot of caulking built up on there. I'm trying to wipe the majority of it off because if when you peel your tape, if you have a lot of caulking on there, it's gonna create what we call a big dam and it's gonna have this nice big ridge on there that doesn't look so good. And then I'm gonna, after I put the caulking on, I don't wanna wait a whole long time because the caulking does dry fairly fast. Now I'm gonna paint over the top of the caulking. And I don't wanna push too hard because if I push really hard, I'm forcing the caulking underneath the tape. I just wanna just, you know, brush this paint on there gently. And I like to go back over where I brushed so the stippling will match the stippling that was rolled on the wall. So I'm just gonna continue working up this door, door jam. 
And then once I get done, I'm gonna just pull this section of tape off. And we do get people asking us, you know, all the time, do we pull it when it's wet or dry? You don't want the caulking to dry and you don't want the paint to dry. You wanna pull it off wet. If you wait till it dries, either one of them dry, it skims over, what's gonna happen is the dried paint or the dried caulking, it's gonna bridge the gap between the tape and the wall and you're gonna pull it and it's probably gonna peel the tape off the wall. So now I'm gonna begin just peeling my tape off and if you go too fast, you know, if uh, I want to just go at nice, you know, even steady speed, if you go too fast, it's going to flick paint off and what we call kind of the, it look like spiders and flicks and it'll get on your trim. So I'm just going to pull that off and then I got a nice crisp clean line. So here's a situation where we're going to use clear caulking instead. And so we've got frog tape down to give us a little bit of an extra insurance on it. Uh, on this, this uh, tile backsplash will actually mask back off the grout. The nice part about this is that clear caulking is going to go into all those pores, fill it all in, we'll paint it, pull it, and then it'll dry clear everywhere where it leaked through that tape or pores. And then again, right here we've got wood where we're going to put that clear caulking in there. It's going to seal that line up and then when it dries, you won't see, like Chris had referred to earlier, that dam show up being white. It'll dry out clear and so all you'll see is the gray color and then the wood. So here we go. And the clear caulking is a lot thinner and goes a lot further. So usually I'll do about 60% of what I need to caulk and I'll drag all that excess on down and then fill in as needed. Pull all the excess off. And what's important with the when you're doing this method is you don't want to dig in with your bristle so you're going to pull all that caulking away. So you want kind of a nice soft touch and to pull your bristles down instead of in. Cover over the stippling with our four inch roller. And you don't want that roller to hit the edge of the tape or it's going to dig that bulk in. And we'll pull off. And then like Chris said, you want to go slowly and then we always pull towards where we're going instead of away and that also is going to help that paint and caulking from not flipping back. We're going to be left with a nice crisp straight line. So here's a, another situation I'm going to show you right here. I'm going to be caulking this baseboard right here. There was a little crack right here and if you do have any cracks or gaps, what you want to do when you install your tape is just leave those uh, cracks or gaps exposed. That way your caulking will fill that and it won't be shown anymore. You probably won't be able to see it on video, but there's you know, a little crack right here and whoever did the installation of the tape just left it exposed. So I'm going to put a bead of caulking right here, just wrap it around this corner. Once again, I'm using white caulking right here. I'm just gonna wipe this off. And in this situation, you can see we haven't rolled the walls yet. And in this method, you can't let your paint or caulking dry. So I'm gonna be putting the paint and caulking on right here. And then I'm gonna be rolling over it get to get the stippling to match the stippling that will go here. But when I pull this, you're probably gonna have a question. What about paint dripping on the baseboards? We do use a super high quality paint. We use the best rollers that roller sleeves, covers that money can buy. And so it's very, very rare that we'll ever run into a situation where it will drip if you use proper rolling and application techniques. 
So on occasion, if we get ahead of the person rolling, we're not so concerned about it. If a drip or something got on to the baseboards or the skirting down here, we would just touch it up. But it's very rare, if almost never, that that does happen. So I'm sure somebody would have that question. So I'm just gonna put that on and then I'm gonna peel it, tape off slowly. And there you have it. And occasionally you're going to run into a situation where maybe the, the tape wasn't down uh, correctly or it came up. And that, that situation right there, if I would have ran over my finger the tape before I installed the caulking, it would have pushed it down. But I can go back, touch that up, or refix it with tape again once it dries. One of the other tips when you're using this trick is you want to make sure that caulking or that tape isn't tight against the wall, but you actually want to leave about an eighth of an inch of space from the wall to the edge of the tape. So you can see there's that little white white line there. And the whole point of this is you want to give that, when you pull that caulking out, it's going to radius it. You want to give that caulking somewhere to land and be flat. Otherwise, it's going to be so built up that you will see a little white edge coming there. And that's because you either, one, didn't wipe enough of the caulking off, or two, put your tape too close to the wall. So that gives you that nice straight line, and it helps your line stand out as being extra straight too, which is always a nice look. So we'll run our bead of caulking there. Really press that in and pull out the excess. And you want to make sure, you know, the reason we're wiping all of that caulking off is you want your finger to be nice and clean each time because if you're leaving gummies of caulking, dried caulking, because it was left on your finger, you're not going to have that nice smooth radius. You're going to have kind of a gummy, chunky looky radius. Like Chris said, you want to roll or you want to caulk in small sections because you want to be able to get to all of this while that caulking is still wet. Because if it starts to dry, you're going to end up not with laser sharp lines, but with lines that um, look like they've all been pulled apart and they're half dry. So once again, immediately after that's done, we will pull it, pull the tape up, try to pull it up towards where you're going and you're left with a nice clean line all the way down. So there you have it. We're going to leave you with a few key pointers to perfect this method. And one is use the right caulking. So clear caulking on anything like stained wood uh, cabinets and anything that's not white. Use white caulking is it's thicker and use it over any type of white trim or anything. Any other pointers you got? Yeah, frog tape or 2020. So the type of tape will, will matter on what you're taping onto. And you also want to think about the cost involved with that. You don't want to be using frog tape all the time if 2020 is going to do because you're going to run up that materials bill pretty fast. Always pull your tape off before your paint and caulking dries mm -hmm. or you're going to have some problems. Yeah, and then make sure you've got enough space away from the wall so that you can get that nice crisp clean line. And when you apply, uh, when you do your cut ends, there's a lot of situations, you know, that vary when it comes to that. You're not always going to do it at the same time. You could roll your first coat and then do your cut ends. You could roll your second coat and then do your cut ends. Or you can do your caulking and taping methane before you roll your walls. And we do get a lot of, of comments back from people who say, well, hey, a real painter should be able to cut a, a straight line without using tape. And that's true. Eventually, if you're a professional painter, you do want to hone your craft so that you can cut a straight line freehand, and that's great. One of the benefits of this process, though, is this helps us get brand new guys, helpers, and apprentices to be more productive on the job site and have cleaner lines sooner than we would if they had to spend years working on getting those clean lines. Now I can have a guy who's been with us for two months, never picked up a paintbrush before that. We work on masking a nice straight line. They mask the line, they cough, they pull it right away. And now they're able to produce at a higher level for us than they would freehand. Very good point.